Welcome to our online service. The service in church this morning isn't being live streamed, but we're grateful to John Spears, who was with us recently, for sending us a message for the online service this morning. We are excited that our children's and youth ministries start back next week, and there's something for every age group. On Tuesday evening, uh, our tiny tots, our junior girls, and our senior girls is starting again. And on Thursday evening, our uh, junior boys rally and our senior boys rallies back. And then on Friday evening, our YF returns again. And you'll know this, this morning we have our Bible class and our kids quest starting um, again too. Most of the activities take place in our youth hall. And during lockdown, we were able to completely refurbish it and extend it. And tonight at 6.30, we're having a special Thanksgiving service to celebrate that. And here's some more information about that. So tonight at half past six, we're going to have a special Thanksgiving service for the redevelopment of the sports hall. It's a great space and we're grateful to God for it. It was first built in 1984, but actually it's a journey that you can trace back long before that to the early 1900s to this building beside me, the original Scrabble Hall. And it was the foresight of the men and women who met in this place to move down to Mill Street to the current site to build a church building that eventually would see lots of young people from the area coming along. And tonight we're going to retrace that journey from here down to where we are now, leading to the newly finished sports hall. We're going to look at key events in the life of the church linked with key events in history. We're going to hear from people who have been part of that journey down through the decades. And we're going to give thanks to God for the provision of wonderful facilities that we get to enjoy and use for his glory in youth and children's ministry. So please make a point of coming to the church tonight at half past six as we celebrate and give thanks to God for what he is doing now and what he will do in the future. There will be more details coming soon about Scrabble Toddlers, the likes of Junior YF and other ministries as they restart a little bit later on. Keep an eye on our website and social media pages for details about this. Now I'm just going to pray, and then there's another song before John's message. Lord, we thank you that we can meet with you again this morning, even though we are at home and we're watching and from the comfort of our own living room or wherever we are. Lord, we thank you that we can uh, come together as a church family in our different locations. Lord, we thank you for John this morning um, as we prepared a message for us. Lord, and we thank you um, for his fellowship and his um, service to our church um, as he comes here um, at a few times a year, Lord, and we praise you for him, and we thank you for his um, devotion to spreading the gospel, Lord. Lord, we just pray um, that you would prepare our hearts as, uh, and ready us as we, we listen to his message in a few minutes. In your name we pray. Amen. Sing with me, and can it be? And can it be that I
good morning to the YouTube listeners in Scrabble. In 1975, Kathy and I, with another couple, um, went on a glow team to the city of Rome. It was one of the most memorable visits that I've had in my ministry over many years. I've been blessed and privileged to travel to many different cities in different parts of the world. I have been preaching in Sydney, Australia, in Seoul, in South Korea, in Chennai in India, uh, Madrid, Lisbon, different parts of Europe, and even to Newton Arts. But for me, my visit to Rome was special for a number of reasons. 1975 was a significant year in the Roman Catholic Church. It was declared Holy Year, where pilgrims from all over the world travelled to Rome to visit the different sites in order to obtain for themselves indulgences so that they might be forgiven from their sins. On that visit we witnessed many devout people going up what's called La Scala Santa, the Holy Stairs, on their knees, praying and seeking the pleasure of God for their forgiveness of sins. And so with that background, I would like to read this morning uh, from the book of Romans and chapter 5, and two verses only, verse 6 and verse 8. It says in my version, When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And I trust that God will bless the reading of his word this morning. As we reflect on these two verses, they convey to us the core message of the gospel. And that would be my intent this morning, to share with you the heart and core of the gospel. There are three things that I want to mention. I want to say a little about how God showed his great love for us. Secondly, how that Christ came at the right time. And thirdly, that Christ died for sinners. Let me think with you about the fact that God showed his great love for us. Love knows no bounds. The true story is told of two soldiers way back uh, for the First World War. Great friends grew up together and decided to enlist in the army and they were posted together to the same unit. And so as they fought uh, in that awful war, one day after a very serious encounter with the enemy, one of these friends returned safely, but the other was missing. He searched for his friend, but discovered he had not returned. He then went to his commanding officer and pleaded with him, Sir, would I have permission to go to no man's land and search and find my friend? The officer said, it would be too dangerous. You would only sacrifice your own life. But the soldier pleaded and the officer relented. And so he went. And after some considerable time, he returned. He returned with his friend over his shoulder, dead. The officer then said to him, you took undue risk to go and recover a dead man. No, sir, he said, it was worth it. Why? Because I got to him just before he died. And I heard him speak his last words. The officer was intrigued. What did he say? Sir, all he said was, I knew you would come. Love knows no bounds. And so when we think about God sending his son to demonstrate his love, not only to the earth, but to the cross of Calvary. Despite our sin, 
despite all the hatred and all the jealousy and lust and pride that's in our hearts and in our lives and much more. God, who hates sin, loves the sinner. And so he sent the Lord Jesus. Let us understand more fully today than ever that sin has a terminal end if allowed to go on uncured, uncleansed. Why Rome 1975 is special to me in another way. It was then on my visit to the famous catacombs where many Christian martyrs were buried underground. One day, coming out of the catacombs, I felt a little unwell and I coughed some blood. It gave me concern. When I returned home and went to the doctor, I discovered through an x-ray that I had tuberculosis in both lungs. I wasn't allowed home. I was taken to um, a particular hospital and treated for months. Every day receiving an injection of strictomycin in order that I might be cured. There was a fellow in the next bed to me suffering from the same disease. He got bored going through the routine of being in hospital, signed himself out, uncured. May God help us to understand that the only cure for sin is the blood of Jesus shed at the cross of Calvary. If we are willing to repent and to say to God we're sorry for being a sinner and sorry for our sin, God is willing to cleanse us and make us white as snow. One of the most famous Scotsmen that lived was a doctor, Professor uh, James Simpson, Sir James Simpson he was called. He died in 1870. He was the discoverer of chloroform. In fact, he was Queen Victoria's personal doctor when she came to Scotland. A journalist asked him one day, could you tell us what your greatest discovery has been in life? He said, certainly. The greatest discovery I made was when I discovered I was a sinner and that Christ died for me. He was scourged for me and he went to the cross for me and bore my sin. What a discoverer. And so when we think of God showing his love for us, we now want to think for a moment about how that Christ came at the right time. The Bible tells us in the fullness of time, the Lord Jesus Christ was born and lived until he was 33 years of age. And at precisely the right moment, he went to the cross. If you trace through John's Gospel, you'll find a reference repeatedly to the hour. On one occasion, he said, my hour has not yet come. And then he refers to Satan's hour, the hour of darkness. But then there came the historic moment in all of history when the Lord Jesus Christ came to the place called Calvary and there they crucified him. It had been in the planning of eternity that this moment would arrive. This was the right time for the Saviour to bear the sin and judgment of the world. I wonder if there's someone listening uh, to me this morning and looking at your life and your circumstances and realizing that God has been dealing with you and speaking to you and preparing you, could this be for you the right time for you to get saved? For I believe in all the experiences of life, there is a right time and there is a moment when the Holy Spirit makes it clear this is our time. It's the most important step that anyone can take in life to step out of darkness into light and to step into salvation through Christ. Jesus is waiting for you to take 
that step. Finally, and quickly, Christ died for our sins. This is a short statement, but so full of meaning and so significant for everyone today. The Bible makes it clear that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. And so we are utterly and completely dependent on the death of Christ to save us from our sin. I understand it's a humbling experience to admit we're guilty, we're unworthy perhaps of God's mercy and grace, and that Christ was willing to take our place, to be our substitute. Many years ago, when I was employed in, in secular work before moving into Christian ministry, um, I had a colleague that worked with me who was sadly diagnosed with kidney failure. I remember it so well, because the doctors in London, he was given uh, expense from the company that we were with to get the best medical treatment, but the hospital in London said, Mr. Bradbury, there is no hope for you except a transplant. Our advice now is that you go home to Birmingham, sit by your phone and wait for a call. And as soon as we have a donor willing to give their kidney, we will call you and bring you back to the hospital. Bradbury said to me, John, it was an a, a awesome kind of feeling. I was sitting by the phone waiting for someone to die that I might live. I was dependent on someone dying. That illustrates for me the story of the gospel. We are dependent on the death of Christ that we might live eternally. My question this morning is, are you available for the operation? to be born again. We have no alternative but the salvation through Christ and his cross. Let me finish by quoting the verse and verses that I quoted at the beginning. Romans 5 verse 6 When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at the right time and died for us sinners. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. May God bless you. Upon a hill, a perfect Savior Upon that day, the greatest love, the punishment that should have fallen on us. Upon Him, upon Him, upon His head, a crown of thorns, upon His heart, a broken our transgressions upon him upon him Christ has died we are forgiven in Christ alive we are the risen and he shall come again praise the King Upon our hearts, His name is written, the King of kings and Lord of lords. We're pouring out a song of praise together upon Him, upon Him. Christ has died. 
die We are forgiven and Christ alive We are the risen and He shall come again Praise the King, praise the King Christ has died We are forgiven and Christ alive We are the risen and He shall come again Praise the King, praise the King One name upon our lips, Jesus No greater name than this, Jesus And every knee will bow, every heart confess Jesus, Jesus One name upon our lips, Jesus No greater name than this, Jesus And every knee will bow, every heart confess Jesus, Jesus Sin Christ has died We are forgiven and Christ alive We are the risen and He shall come again Praise the King, praise the King Sin Christ has died We are forgiven and Christ alive We are the risen and He shall come again Praise the King, praise the King Christ has died forgiven and Christ alive we are the risen and he shall come again praise